In our last tutorial I showed you how to do a screenshot and in this tutorial I'll show you how to do another screenshot but this time it's going to be advanced. So the difference between the last and this one, in the last one um, you can only take a screenshot of what's uh, viewable in your uh, display, in your on your monitor, your screen. So on this one we're going to do it headless and headless being that you know you might need to take a screenshot or do some automotive type of work on a remote server um, something which doesn't have a screen and so the advantage of that when taking screenshots is that you can extend the size of your display your screen and because uh, it's virtual so you have full control of specifying whatever dimension that you need so if you have a web page which is um, really long and typically on your screen you will need to scroll down and when you scroll down um, you know you cannot take uh, screenshots uh, you'll have to take multiple screenshots and you know you just want to avoid doing something like that you just want to take a screenshot of the whole page it's full length and so this is the way uh, you can do it using selenium okay so I will start by going into the last tutorial directory and I'll copy the last script so that was the first screenshot that we did And the first thing I'll need to do is just import a library. So performing headless operations, uh, we can do that using a library, a module called Pi Virtual Display. And from that, we'll import the module display, which has a capital D. And then I'm just going to put in some um, variables, but actually before I do that, let's just make some changes. I'm just going to change these to capitals. And you'll find that the more I use variables, I often change them to capitals, use capitals. Um, and the reason for this, it just makes it easier for me to read. So. If I'm sending arguments to the script, then I could just quickly scan through my scripts and I can see which ones were um, capitals. So this is just my own way of doing things. And I know that Python, um, you know, it, it, with its classes, it would have all caps for particular things. And, um, you know, Python has a reason for using them. But my only, my personal reason it's just that it makes things easier for me to understand and read and typically what I do I put all of my um, variables at the top of the page um, and I sort of kind of follow the same principles as uh, C, C plus when defining variables okay so the next thing we need to do um, as we've imported display we now need to create some variables for those so we're going to um, say whether it's going to be visible or not so you have the option when um, using uh, the pi virtual display you can set it to either one or zero and in this case we'll set it to zero and zero means that you can't see the display you're going to do it headless and one means that it will be um, something that you can see on your screen okay so the next one we need is going to be the width, and 
and I'll set the width to 1000 pixels and the next one we'll need is the height and I'll also set that to 1000 pixels and so the next thing we're going to do is um, we're going to start the display and I'm going to put that into a variable which I'll call display and it's a capital letter for the library capital D as above and then within that we have um, some keyword arguments sorry some positional um, arguments sorry I'll beg your pardon we have uh, keyword arguments which are visible and that will be display visible and then we have sorry size and size is going to be a tuple and it will be display width and display height okay and then once we've done that we need to start the display so I've put it into my own variable um, all lowercase and so that variable is now now contains the object display object and we need to start it and then because we've started it I'll just go to the bottom of the page and just after um, quitting the selenium driver just after that below it I'll put in there display dot stop and that's the that's to the stop that's to this that's to stop the display okay and that's it that's all we need to do so um, I'll just show you how that works so let's run that So let me just go back and uh, correct that. Okay, let's give that a go. And I'll go back and correct that as well. <laughs> okay, where are we? There we go, down there. You'll always see me going back and correcting typing errors. Uh, display height is not defined either. Let's clear this. Okay, so it's now opened up the display and if I just extend that this bit here this window is a display and inside it you've got the um, browser so I'll let that do its thing and then it will automatically close okay so let's take a look at um, the screen grab so I set the size to uh, a thousand by a thousand pixels and although we're using the display um, I haven't extended the size so it's just pretty much taken a screen grab of uh, the dimensions of the of the um, uh, what you could see inside of the display and so it's done that for the sign-in page and also for the home page 
So let's go back and change some of these settings. So instead of doing a thousand um, in height, I will now do um, let's say three thousand pixels, and let's give that a shot. Now that's not going to work actually, but I'll just show you. We'll still get the same result. Hmm. That was a weird picture of a child in the trees. Okay, so let's take a look. Yeah, there you go, child in the trees right there. It's a bit strange. Okay, so it's still the same size, um, hasn't actually done anything. So in order to get the screen grab that we're looking for, we need to run it headless. So let's change the one to zero and then we'll see what we get. Okay, so we've got an error here and there's a, a library which I don't have installed. So it says that um, it's looking for XVFB. So let's quickly install that um, to get this working. So that will be sudo apps install xvfb and we'll let that install what I tend to do um, when I give my tutorials, I like to keep it uh, raw and any typos, errors, anything, I like to keep them in there because if you have the same thing, then um, you know exactly why that error occurred um, and how to resolve it. So that's why I try not to uh, edit too much and try and keep as many mistakes in here as possible. Okay, that's done. So let's give that a try now. And I'll just clear. Okay, let's take a look at our screen grab. And there you go, so you've got the full page. Um, and we'll take a look at the home page as well. And there is the home page. So I've specified the length to be 3000. Um, if the page is longer, I could specify something way much longer. I could go up to like as much as I want and then it will take that screen grab um, and you'll have a very large file. Um, I also find this really useful when I used to um, uh, do work in web and I needed to communicate we're working on a web page and I needed to communicate and annotate over a page and I didn't really want to spend too long um, taking individual screen grabs chopping them up then you know I could just take a big screen grab like this and then you know I can um, write on it communicate and you know do what I need to do with it so you know, there are there are tools out there which does which do this, and um, you know, but doing things yourself um, is always much better. Uh, just understanding how things work and some of the dependencies and libraries that can help you along the way, and just doing things in the terminal and not relying on software, um, in my opinion, is is just the best way, really. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I hope that helps, and that's just really an addition to 
uh, the previous tutorial where I showed you how to screen how to do a screen grab but then you might have advanced um, uh, purposes to do something a little bit more uh, different all right thank you very much bye